Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the youth room. This is Andrew Wang about coming from St. Charles. We have these three beautiful images of three different hearts, and this is actually called the Three Heart Devotion. And in these devotions, there are three different images that represent the Holy Family. And so can you maybe guess which one you think is which? What do you think? Yep, you guessed it. The top one is Jesus. You see that IHS? That means Christ. And we can tell that it's the Sacred Heart because it was pierced by the spear and ultimately has the crown of thorns around it as the cross. But what's beautiful about the Sacred Heart is that it is a heart that is alive. It's still beating. It's not a dead heart. It's not like shriveled up and yucky looking. It actually is a heart that is burning with love for each and every one of us. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite, favorite images and favorite devotions, and it is the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I want to read this verse to you, so if you want to pull out your Bibles and go to Luke 2, Luke chapter 2, uh, and it starts in verse 29. And this is Simeon speaking to the Holy Family when they had presented Jesus in the temple. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the re revelation of the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising of many nations, and a sign for that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, and the thoughts of and the thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. And so we see here, this is the sword that Simeon was speaking about. And again, this is a heart that is fully alive, fully beating with love for each and every one of us. Mary is our mother, and we can turn to her in all of these times of chaos, these times of uh, being stuck in our homes. We can pray a Hail Mary each day. I know uh, I saw one thing going around that uh, people are trying to pray a Hail Mary uh, every hour. Just to remember that Mary is their mother and that God has this thing figured out and has it covered. And all we have to do is entrust ourselves to Our Lady. And so the image of the Immaculate Heart is a beautiful way to remember that even when tragedy, and even when hard things happen, like the sword that pierced Mary's heart, she still lived it out. She still was faithful through everything all the way to the cross. And this heart down here, maybe you don't know as much about this one. I didn't either until a few years ago. This is actually the courageous heart of St. Joseph. So, we see here, again, this is a heart that is fully alive. We don't really know what happened to Joseph at the end. We don't know how he died. We don't know what happened to him. It doesn't say much about it. We don't have history records on it. But we trust that uh, Joseph was the father, the foster father of Jesus. He was the earthly father of Jesus. And one of the coolest things that I learned about St. Joseph lately uh, is that he is the savior of the savior. Think about that for a minute, that he, when in his dreams, the angel came to him and said, you should go to Egypt. And he did. He woke up the next day and he went to Egypt. And so in a way, he saved Jesus Christ so that he could save all of us. So St. Joseph is the, is the savior of the savior. And so it's really, really cool. This, this lily right here is a symbol of purity, of strength. It's beautiful. These flowers are gorgeous. They remind us of the purity and the strength of St. Joseph. And so we have these beautiful images of these three hearts to help us to remember that God has this all figured out, that no matter when we're afraid, when we're scared, when we're not at peace, God, if we turn to him, will give us the peace, joy, and, uh, and all the graces that we need to become who we're called to be. Remember, you're still called to be a saint, even though you can't come here to youth group, even though you can't be here at the youth room, uh, that you can't even go to mass, but you are called to be a saint, and I know you can do it. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks.